Good morning. This is Doc T. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the ankle. We already covered the toe. Hopefully you guys had a lot of fun playing with the toes and trying to figure out what's going on with your toes. Hopefully most of you do really well, if not all of you. There's always a couple that are going to have a little bit of a toe problem, but we learned how to address that. So today we're going to focus on the ankle joint. Now, the ankle joint is typically one of the most limiting factors in your squatting mechanics. So whether you're in a front squat, back squat, overhead squat, even Olympic lifting, if the ankle joint is stuck and not able to move in a nice, easy dorsiflexion type motion, then it's going to hinder the way the rest of the chain can move in a squat going up the back and the hips. So, to assess this, we're going to have a wall. This is just a stack for a box step up, so to speak, or a box jump. You're going to have a wall or some flat surface in front of you. You're going to get your fist, which is roughly four inches. You're going to place that between the wall and your toe. So between the wall and the toe, and you're going to sit up nice and tall. And when you do this assessment, you want to make sure you kind of lean in with your weight over your ankle joint. You don't want to push away. As you come into it, you want to get as close to the wall as you can with the goal being to touch your knee to the wall. Now, also, make sure the heel does not come off the ground. So you don't want to see this coming off the ground. You want the heel stuck to the ground, foot stuck four inches from the wall, and slide into it. Now, for those that can get their knee to the wall, good news for you. Your ankle joint is actually not a problem for you when it comes to squatting. So you can actually cross that off your list and move up the chain to find out what might be a limiting factor for you. For those that do have a problem like I do, trying to get to that wall there, and I'm just, just coming up a little bit short, that actually means that that could be causing a lot of problems in my hips and up the chain as I do a squat. So for me, this is a great spot to start working on my mobility to clean up that ankle dorsiflexion there so I can get my knee to the wall so I can correct my squat better. All right, this is the ankle evaluation. Real quick, we'll go over the big toe again. Knee come back, pull up the toe, see if make sure you can get about 45 to 50 degrees of dorsiflexion in the big toe. Then four inches from the wall, check the ankle, just lean into that and try to get your knee to the wall. Now understand a quick side note. If you repeat this test over and over and over again, you'll get closer and closer and closer because you're actually creating some length in the tissue, getting blood flow to the tissue. You want to do this assessment when you're cold. Because the bottom line is, when you're cold, it shouldn't matter that range of motion, whether you're cold or warm. Range of motion within a joint and within a system exists or it doesn't exist. So don't get yourself kind of warming up, warming up, all of a sudden, oh, boom, I got it. Because that's not really checking true range of motion. So you want to be not cold per se, but you know, in the morning, before you really get active or moving, get this set up, get your foot set or your fist set up by your toe, sit into it, lean and see what you can get. Okay? So that's ankle dorsiflexion. Next time we're going to come in, we're going to start some uh, correctives, some exercises we can do to correct that ankle dorsiflexion problem. This is Doc T. I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.